All right, we're going to define hyperbolic trig functions here by looking at the exponential function. I'll note that um, the function f of x equals e to the x is not an even function nor an odd function, right? That the graph of it looks like this. Goes through the point uh, 0, 1, goes up kind of fast on the right, kind of horizontal asymptote of 0 on the left. Um, it's not symmetric about the y-axis, it's not symmetric about the origin. Okay? It is, however, defined for the whole real line. So, using the theorem that we had um, in the previous video, um, I can rewrite e to the x as e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 plus e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. That is, I have right here an even function and an odd function and uh, the sum is equal to e to the x. Um, what I want to do is I want to take, let's start with the odd part, and give that function by itself a name. And what we're going to call it is we're going to call it um, the hyperbolic sine. And I write it like sine, but I put an h there. So sin, it's usually we say cinch. Anyway, the hyperbolic sine of x is by definition the odd part of the exponential function. So e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Um, and we take the even part and we call it the hyperbolic cosine. So the cosh of x is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. Okay. If I look at the graphs of these things, you know, e to the x over 2 looks like so uh, how do I want to think of this? Look at look at e to the x going this way. And look at minus e to the minus x. So e to the minus x is going that. So minus e to the minus x looks like that. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the average. This is minus e to the minus x. So I'm taking the average of those two. And so right smack dab in between. Well, right smack dab in between here is going to be at 0. And then when this is going to 0, it's going to this, this goes to zero here, so you're going to be essentially half as high as that one is. But that's going to get pretty high still. And likewise, on this side, with this one headed to zero, you're taking the average of zero and whatever this one down here is. So it's going to be headed down that way. And so there's the graph of y equals the hyperbolic sine. Uh, to do the hyperbolic cosine, I'm taking the average of e to the x and e to the minus x. So I'm... Uh, I'm looking at you know, e to the x is your increasing exponential, e to the minus x is this decreasing exponential, and you're taking the average of the two. Um, so the average is right here when they're equal to each other. Uh, when this one's getting big and that one's getting small, the average is essentially going to be twice as big as, as that one. So that's going to be headed up and that's going to be headed up. Notice that this one is symmetric about the origin. It's an odd function. The hyperbolic cosine here is symmetric about the, uh, the y-axis. Uh, it's an even function. Now, you might be thinking, this is all in terms of exponentials. What the heck does it have to do with trig? And what the heck does it have to do with hyperbolas? Well, I hear you cry. Um, be patient. We will, we will we will see that. Um, while I'm here making definitions, I want to define um, four other functions. Uh, one we're going to call the hyperbolic tangent. So, tanch of x. Well, I want sort of trig relationships here, so it's going to be the hyperbolic sine divided by the hyperbolic cosine. So this fraction divided by that fraction. And when you divide by this fraction, you invert and multiply and the twos cancel out. So I've got e to the x minus e to the minus x, so the numerator from the sine, and then uh, down here I got the numerator from the cosine, e to the x plus e to the minus x. So that's my hyperbolic tangent. Then I've got the hyperbolic cotangent, which is sometimes called Koth. Koth reminds me of uh, Star Wars. Um, the ice planet. No, that's Hoth. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so the the hyperbolic cotangent should be the reciprocal of the hyperbolic tangent, so that's what will make it e to the x plus e to the minus x over e to the x minus e to the minus x. So, you know, in this respect, they're feeling like trig functions, but, you know, why were these first two called trig functions? I have no idea. Uh, well, you might have no idea. Uh, I'll let you in shortly. 
Um, then we've got the hyperbolic uh, secant, which we'll call the sech. The hyperbolic secant of x is the reciprocal of hyperbolic cosine. So that's 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x. And the hyperbolic cosecant, or the cosech, um, is the reciprocal of the hyperbolic sine. So that's 2 over e to the x minus e to the minus x. So there's your basic definitions of the hyperbolic trig functions. Um, they're all in terms of exponential functions, e to the x and e to the minus x. One last thing I want to say here before we go on to looking at um, some more relationships between them and, and then some calculus uh, of them. Um, I claim you see hyperbolic cosines every day and you don't realize it. Um, if you look at telephone poles, you know, power lines here, uh, and you look at the wire that hangs from one telephone pole draped to the next one, that shape of the wire from one to the next is a hyperbolic cosine. People think of it as a parabola, but it is not. It is a hyperbolic cosine. Likewise, when you look at suspension bridges, if you've ever been to San Francisco or whatever, and you see the, the Golden Gate Bridge, right, and it's got this nice, uh, you know, this nice piece here in the middle that's holding up the bridge, that arc right there is a hyperbolic cosine. Sometimes it's called a catenary curve, um, but uh, but it's a hyperbolic cosine. So these are these are functions that show up and they they're useful. They 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 do things. Um, um, also, one more thing for the hyperbolic cosine: um, if you ever been to um, St. Louis and you see the the archway, the gateway arch, that's the big, huge building. You can go up on the top of it, actually. Um, if you read Percy Jackson, he blows up the top of it, right? Um, that shape is an upside-down uh, hyperbolic cosine curve. Um, same shape as, as this. Right? It has some nice properties of the physics of this thing, is that it, it's a self-supporting arch. Um, in fact, if you look at the old Roman arches, they generally had uh, this shape because the the shape itself holds itself up. Uh, anyway, uh, hyperbolic cosines. So there you go.